I'm in this nice little drawing room. Wait. I'm in this nice little drawing room in Birmingham. We've got a proper British kind of fireplace and we've got the proper grandfather clock behind me and the stairs going up. And I'm looking out at the garden and we've got like bookshelves full of books. And this is a this is a proper I don't know if it's more of a drawing room or a den, but it's a nice little place. Um, what was that bottle I had there? I know I had a bottle here. Oh yeah, this one. This is a, a Lafroy 25, which has been generously handed over by my friend. You may have seen him commenting on videos. Um, goes by the name of Welsh Toro. And uh, yeah, we... We have, we're having a few drops here. And Loch Ness says, good morning, Quig. <laughs> uh, for us, it's about, uh, what time is it? About four in the afternoon, something like that? Five. Five already? Now that means we're going to have to be going soon. Well, soon-ish. One thumb up, two viewers. Okay, we're just starting. This is, the first thing I got out of this was a hint of bacon. By the way, here's Welsh Toro, if you want to say hi to everyone. Whoop. Hi, everyone. Cheers. Happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays. These are very happy holidays for me. <laughs> very happy holidays. And the first thing I got from this was bacon. I was, I was nosing bacon, and I'm still getting it. Now there's some citrus and some mintiness as well. What else did I say there was before? I remember saying stuff about this as I was going along and four people watching and there's probably more comments, but I can't see them. Oh, no, it was just a Loch Ness saying good morning, Quig. Everybody else is shy. Nice guest today at Welsh Toro. <laughs> Who said that? Uh, that was Loch Ness as well. Cheers, Loch Ness. Unfortunately, nice you're, see you. you're probably backlit by the, by the light from the window and there's a pigeon on the fence. Cool. <laughs> this is so, this is great. Okay, we got two thumbs up, four people watching, and probably not a lot of comments. It's kind of early. If it's five in the afternoon here, that would be nine in the morning where I live. Right. So uh, a video of mine went up about two, three hours ago. We might get a few Brits. We might, but it's, you know, they're still at work or they're on their way home from work, so... Yeah. I don't mind if, oh, we only got three watching now. Well, that's okay. If you go at night like we did last night uh, in Manchester, then, then you get, yeah. I think that thing has 400 views already. It's insane. But I just thought, because I'm trying Lafroy 25, how many times do you get to, tr to do this? I've never seen this stuff on shelves at home. I've only seen, uh, I had the 18, which was brilliant. But this, Oh, there's some sherry cask in there, correct? Yeah. A bit of Valoroso, but it's so, you know, I wasn't getting much of the smoke on the nose. Not much at all. I was just getting this bacon, which I think comes from the sherry. And... I was just getting this bacon and some fruitiness and, and some some of that typical uh, citrus, you know, oranges and lemons kind of thing. But now, on the finish, that's where the peat comes out. Right on the finish, and it, it's hanging on. It's, it's subtle to begin with. It's not going to bash you in the face like a Lefroy 10, but... It's soft, and then it comes out and asserts itself after everything has moved out of the way. I'm liking this a lot. Well, thanks for sharing this with me. I, I do appreciate it. I think I'm getting um, a slightly, a little bit of a uh, lightly cured ham, perhaps more than bacon, and maybe a teeny bit of red apple in there. Okay. So I'm getting citrus, and you're getting apple. 
little, little, only a little, a little bit of red apple. Mm. Um, and and maybe not so much bacon, but cured ham. But it's changed since then. Since then, I've been getting a little bit more of the um, what do you call that? Uh, a little bit more of the brininess. It's a little, mm. a little bit briny, mm. Mm. a little briny, and oh, on the finish as well is, is a little bit of salt. Yes, salt. The salt, the salt and the peat comes in on the finish. Mm. Very good. More so than with the eighteen. The eighteen is a little more understated than this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the little bit of Oloroso is helping that brine to show itself. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely good stuff. I don't think anybody can see you. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're, you're backlit like crazy. <laughs> but I got the, the light shining right on me. Let's see if there's any more comments. Uh, no, no more comments. We've only got two, five people watching, two thumbs up still. And Lachanus was the last one to comment, so nobody else is commenting right now. Well, we're just having a nice little. Uh, it's still the afternoon for most people on the, on the, uh, in North America, and it's still. Uh, well, it's the morning for people in North America, and it's the afternoon and rush hour for people on this side of the pond. There's Whiskey Straight Al saying hi, guys. Hi, Whiskey Straight Al. Slunch of a. Uh, what else have we got with this? Uh, this is most enjoyable. I could spend a lot of time with this. Last night we had. Oh, last night was insane. Went out with. Uh, oh, there's whiskey. Oh, now they're coming in. Whiskey Pilgrim says, "Hope you're enjoying your." Oh yeah, Rabbit in Red says, "Quig, <laughs> Rabbit." <laughs> Um, eight people watching now. They found cool. us. They found our stream. Uh, Hoagie, Hoagie's on here too. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, Quig, McQuig, how uh, the journey is amazing, Hoagie. Just amazing. And Loch Ness is saying, "Hey to Rabbit." Uh, yeah, hey Rabbit, hey Loch Ness. Uh, I'd give my left hand for some Lafroy twenty five. Um. No, all you have to well, all I had to do was was meet up with um with Welsh Toro and 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 offer him some uh, lot 40 cast strength. And it wasn't hard really. <laughs> I carried that bottle all the way from uh Victoria over Canada. We flew over Reykjavik and came into London and I dragged that bottle all the way up to Scotland and uh I left it in a locker for a weekend along with a bunch of stuff at the bus depot. I think it cost me 50 pounds uh, to store the whiskey in the bottle in, in the, in the bus depot when we went to Isla for the weekend. And I dragged everything back down here to Birmingham all the way from Edinburgh. So yeah, I worked for it. I worked for it. <laughs> See, definitely. <clears throat> yeah, you can, there we are. I'm a bit closer now. You're a bit closer. Maybe not. Cheers, closer, fellas. But... Yeah. There we are. <laughs> oh, no, I have to get close, otherwise. Uh, no. yeah, there we are. Uh, I can see my ugly mug in close up. <laughs> yeah. So we're having a nice little afternoon before we're supposed to go meet up with uh, Vin PF from No Nonsense Whiskies. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and. Uh, Whiskey Straight Al says Slancha, Slancha va. And Rabbit saying hi to Loch Ness. And he's also saying, well, what's going on here? It's a little arrow. Uh, how many suitcases full of malts are you bringing home? Only two. I had to get rid of some stuff here. They're completely stuffed, though. <laughs> They're completely stuffed, yeah. And I have to check those so that they go past security. And my back that doesn't have any whiskey on it, I can take on the plane with me. So I, I you know what I've got? I've got what, let's see, uh, eight or nine single malts and about 31 samples uh, that were given to me by various people, including Roy and uh, Jason Whiskey Wise and um, Whiskey Jason from, over from Germany. I met up with him. We went up to uh, Glen Goyne and then we went to, went to Deanston to meet up with Roy for lunch. 
I think Roy gave me a few. Yeah, and um, and then we went to this uh, little distillery in London called Bimber. Now, the people at Bimber gave me about another 11 samples or so, <laughs> or 12. I don't know how many exactly. Uh, it's just insane. So I got a lot of the 50 and 100 milliliter bottles, and I've got about nine full, yeah, uh, nine, nine uh, full-size bottles. So yeah, that's how many suitcases of malts. Somebody say, Hoagie's saying, uh, you got yourself some teapot dram then. You know what? I was gonna. I was gonna, but we were, that was early in the voyage, early in the trip. And I was at um, Glen Goyne going, yeah, you know, this is nice, but I'm going to Isla. And of course on Isla, I went crazy. I, I just bought every distillery we went to, I bought a bottle. I even got a bottle at Oban before we went there. And I got a bottle in London of something I was looking for, some dark cove from Ardbeg. And as far as I know, that was the last bottle in London uh, that you could buy. I, I don't think you can get another bottle of dark cove in London to save your life. Um, but I did get this one here. This was a nice little surprise from uh, from Alan, the whiskey friend. He gave, gave us some Mortlach uh, to sip on here. And this is the rare old Mortlach. So we, we had a drama of that just before starting with the uh, Lefroig 25. And we may move on. And if you permit, uh, kill home and port cask, we might do that. I don't know. We'll see. We're just having a relaxing dram right now. Staying hydrated. Uh, I don't think we're going to go on very long. We've gone on for 12 minutes. There's more. Hmm. It's interesting. I, I'm getting a bit of tobacco now in this. Ah, oh, perfect. It changes as it's, it goes. It's, yeah, it's morphing a bit. It's uh, a bit of uh, white peach and maybe a bit of tobacco. Yeah. <coughs> I can. Or tobacco leaf. That's what I mean. Oddly enough, the um, tobacco leaf you're getting, I'm getting, I'm getting pears now. Yeah, yeah. A little, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm getting more pears. Uh, than I am citrus like I got before. No, I'm getting, there's a, a white peach in Spain called a chiramoya, hmm. which is a sort of light, very light kind of peachy. Thing. I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. It's a bit like that, and, and but also, yeah, some, a bit of leather or tobacco or something like that in there. Um, yeah, yeah. On the finish, on you know, the back of the tongue, on the finish. It's stretching a bit, but I do see what you're talking about. <laughs> But I'm not as far as you are. You you've done that already. I'm, I'm still still working on it. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, they're asking questions now. I'm gonna have to answer them. Uh, Hoagie Bear says, "Same with me." 2014. Skipped the teapot dram early, in and bought only Lagavulin's on Isla. Totally get you. <laughs> Well, I got some Kilhoman. I got some um, uh, some Lagavulin. I got some Lafroigs. I got some. Um, did I say Kilhoman? Yeah, I got some Bunahaven too. I got a Bunahaven, Moynia, uh, not Oloroso, but uh, Marcella. Oh, that's gonna be good. So yeah, yeah, exactly, Hoagie. Uh, you're we're on the same page here. Did you buy anything at Deanston? No, but we we did have a. I got videos coming up from that Deanston visit. It's wild, and uh, Roy Roy did some shooting uh, video as well. And we were in the um, we were in the warehouse, and we were um, getting. Uh, whiskey like straight from the barrel and or straight from the cask and drinking it looks like it's been an amazing trip quig uh enjoy every minute of it then that was rabbit in the red saying that yes uh it was a great trip i try to get in one trip of a lifetime every decade 
And so far, I've been making it once every two decades. So first trip of a lifetime was Germany and Austria in 1979. In, two, in 1997, my dad and I did a road trip of uh, the Yukon, Alaska, Northwest Territories. Three-week road trip camping all the way. It was amazing. Uh, which vintage... Lafroy 25 are you having says hoagie is there a year on that or a, a dis date of distillation it's, it's the black bottle okay uh, it's we should point out it's car strength but it's 45.1 percent yeah and the whiskey scouts here saying uh, lunch with you again <laughs> so it doesn't doesn't have a year on it no i think it it could be 15 okay I think it could be 2015 uh bottled in scotland uh, okay there might be some some numbering down here on the edge somewhere i'm not sure how lafroy does it and there's a what is that tasting notes or something on the back 45.1 percent so i don't know you might want to do your research on that i don't i don't know how long it's been open but it's just here's the you can that's the label I don't know if that tells you enough information to get a year on it. Uh, I don't know if they print little numbers in here somewhere to give a date of manufacture or a date of bottling. It's probably been open for a little while, hasn't it? <laughs> it's okay. Six months ago. It's like okay. That, it's months. okay. <laughs> Not a problem. Afternoon all says Whiskey Wednesday. Great. Good to have you uh, with us, good. Phil. Good to have you with us, Phil. Um, oh, wait. I think he's got an answer for us here. Um, oh. Hoagie says it's the 2014 vintage. Uh, it, yeah. The man is the expert. He knows what he's talking about. I can't get bottles like this where I come from, so I don't get to know anything about it. Or 2013 for that matter. Yeah, could, yeah, could be. Could be. Yeah. Have you had it for a long time before you opened it? I did. Okay. It came, it came in a big wooden box. It came in a nice wooden box. I got two of them. I got them from Spain. Oh, okay. Um, and they were they were they were they were a good price, so I bought two of them. <laughs> they were they were much much cheaper. Half at least half the price of what I could buy for them pay for them here back then. That was back then, um, and probably <laughs> still now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a it was a question of buy now or never really. They were still at the upper end of what I spend on whiskey, but mm -hmm. um, I mean these things cost four hundred pounds now. I would never, I would never buy that. Um, Eight hundred bucks. <laughs> uh, it was it was much less than that. Eight hundred dollars Canadian, goodness. And so, uh, is it true that they just they just suck suck down the Cardu like crazy down there in Spain? They they love Cardu, Cardu twelve. It, that's where it all goes. That's it. <laughs> it's yeah. Diageo's best-selling dram, and I can tell you it's because it goes in lots of blends and tons of it goes to Spain. That's their chosen uh, malt of choice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I, it just goes to show how interesting how it works in the world. Yeah. How, uh, how single malt sales work in the world. Yeah, you know? and, and Cardu, I can get Cardu no problem where I live. Yeah, 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 you can buy it. I mean, it tastes like a blend almost, the, the 12. Um, yeah. Well, what about that scandal back then when they it was a uh, pure malt? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I can't, I'm trying to remember what that was now, but they, yeah, they were involved in that, weren't they? I they, think they were using a whiskey from, um, from uh, was it? I'm trying to remember the. Uh, it's one of my favorite distilleries. When I, whenever I can get something from them, it's just like magic. Um, I hope uh, got some comments coming in. Oh, some there. more. Let's see. Uh, both 45.1. Okay. So that would be the 2014 and the 2013 editions. Hoagie says, does the black label have a golden frame? Yes. Yes, it does. It's got a golden frame right around it. Uh, let me show you, see that there's a golden frame there. Yes. Ah, uh, he's, he's done his research, this guy. Uh, and whiskey throttle says, close the curtain so we can see your guest. <laughs> Uh, he's, you won't be able to see me then. Uh, we'll leave him a little bit up there. Okay, then it's the 2014. The 2014 says Hoagie. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, can we see him? 
shorter. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit better. A little better, yeah. <laughs> Still a bit backlit, but it's working. Uh, yeah, there we go. Cheers, everyone. Well, it, it's it, the question is who's whose guest? I'm his guest. Uh, I'm your guest. Uh, and and well, well fr friends and guests. You know, yeah, and same, you're you're my guest on the channel, but oh, yeah, I'm, your, I'm your guest in the house. So yeah. yeah, I guess that makes us even. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was in the middle of. It's all about the card. Oh, Cardu. Yeah. Hmm. Where oh, a lovely drop says. That's my phone. I'll just go there. Go for it. A lovely drop says Garrett Simpson. Yes, it is. And whiskey throttle says, "Where are the hot UK chicks?" Oh, I might have shot some video which might have some hot UK chicks in it. Uh, well, while she's uh, up there, he's uh, he's on the phone, so. UK hot chicks. Um, I see a lot of them as I go around uh, in the uh, in the uh, airport. Well, airports and uh, train stations, and it's fun to people watch here because people are so different from at home. Uh, and uh, there are some beautiful women, yes, and there are some that have no taste at all. They are they're overdone. Um, just it's 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 a different different world from what I am what I'm used to. So uh, I'm sure that there are some hot chicks that will show up in the videos that I will put together from all the uh, video clips that I shot. Um, and whiskey throttle says those are the ones that like me. Oh, the ones that are over the top. <laughs> The ones that are over the top, the ones that are overdone, they wear a lot of, some of them wear a lot of makeup and well, I guess that's the same everywhere, but I think in Alberta, the, the, the girls are more wholesome here. They're just kind of a lot of fake in Glasgow, rather young girls look more like harlots on the street, crazy hot pants and yes, and high heels. Yes, yes. And uh, some of them had uh, had their their heads shaved and their heads tattooed and you know little spikes of hair coming out and uh, it, I guess the the fashion is is rather different. Uh, yeah, Glasgow was interesting because there were a lot of tourists and some of the girls were yeah over the top as well. Yeah, whatever. And uh, whiskey throttle saying to Hoagie. Uh, those are the ones that watch too much TV. <laughs> the ones with the crazy hot pants, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, back to this uh, Freud 25. Beautiful stuff. I'm getting some more. So I've, got, I've got another one for Quig to try. Oh, what's that? A Springbank 12 cast strength. Ooh, <laughs> that'd be nice. And because the 25-year-old Lefroy is so subtle in its peak, I won't feel bad about going to Springbank 12 after it. <laughs> they were just talking about uh, the girls in the UK. <laughs> And they have a reputation. <laughs> among some of these guys, they do. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Hoagie says one thing, and Whiskey Throttle says another thing. Daniel says another thing. And I'm I'm still trying to make up my mind. Uh, some of them are, 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 are nice girls, and, and some of them are just over the top in the, in the fashion. Um, and some, are, some of them are just pleasantly plump, you know? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. More so than where I live. Yeah. People are getting plumper. They are? <laughs> yes. So it's a bit like the US? Yeah, yeah well, everywhere. <laughs> really? Hmm. But Britain is a much more liberal country than a lot of people think. Uh, yeah, they have this... Uh, the UK has this image of... Um, it has an image that sort of how can I put it? I think you put it better than I could. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, it is, 
it is, <laughs> it's quite a liberal country, and I think a lot more than people think until they visit it. Uh -huh. uh, I think people think that Brits are a lot of, you know, can be a bit stiff, and uh, stiff actually everything, everything goes here. Really. A little bit stuffy, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, that's the reputation, yeah. but that's not the reality. No. Um, well, I mean, you know, it's mixed like everywhere. Yes. You know? Some people are going to be like that, but generally it's not. It's a very, you know, easygoing place generally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's got a lot of history and, uh, you know, I think in Britain things, everything goes. <laughs> yeah. And I found that there are more extremes, you know, like where I live, everyone dresses about the same. They all have a baseball cap, which look terrible on me, so I don't wear baseball caps ever. And they, they have the same clothes. Everybody wears the same clothes. But around in, in, in the UK, I found that there are incredible varieties of styles of clothing that people wear. And they seem to be a lot more conscious about that than we are in North America. I think they're also more uh, conscious of brands. Um, which, which I noticed from con continental Europe as well. I got some uh, relatives in Austria who w came to Canada and they were shocked that I wasn't wearing Pierre Cargay and this and Christian Dior that. And, uh, you know, they, they were shocked. They were shocked that I was wearing stuff from Kmart, you know, and, 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 and they, they couldn't believe it. Maybe that's, that's part of, maybe it's worse. Maybe it's more like that on the continent than here on, in Britain, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not an ex. Ask me, I, I'm a fashion. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hopeless with it. <laughs> I'm an I'm a non-expert on fashion as well. I I don't know anything about it. Whoa, we've got some more comments. Uh, ah, here we go. Hey there, Quig says Rot Gut Review. We got Rot Gut Review all the way from Wisconsin, and. Daniel saying, food quick, meet girls in libraries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's your trick, is it? Uh, better not tell your girlfriend that. Uh, and Whiskey Scout says to Whiskey Throttle, that would be the crazy ones. <laughs> hey, Dan. <laughs> Springbank is a gem. One of my faves, says Garrett Simpson. And Throttle says to Whiskey Scout, crazy. And whiskey friend, oh, there's Alan saying, "Hey, Quig, hey, He's Alan, slunch of uh, it was a great night we had last night. That I enjoyed that like to to the to the hilt. It was great, and we're we're going again. Mm. That was a fantastic night. I I learned a lot. Never go to that bar on Tuesday. <laughs> um." Take a book to the library with the bottle hidden in it and share with a cute girl. Cute girls that read. Hey, whiskey friend deleted, retracted a message. Okay. Uh, Hoagie says, if you're not done shopping yet, try to get yourself a high grove too. What is that? What's a high grove? Ulichan says, quig meet girls at the co-op. Actually, I've had been, I've had good luck at the train station. Uh, Ardbeg Supernova. Yes, we had some Ardbeg Supernova last night. Committee release. It was just fantastic. Uh, that would have been nice to to do a live from that bar, but the the guy with the microphone was much too loud, and he was telling everybody, "Shh, shh, shh." He's trying to get us to shut up. We're just trying to enjoy whiskey. But we won't go into that any more detail. We're just trying to enjoy the whiskey and tell us our, uh, you know, what we thought of it and stuff. And we're, we're sharing a good time. And, and this guy with the microphone's going, shh. And then all the guys playing guitar, they all sounded the same. I think the girl was the best. But um, ah, I won't go into any more details about that right now. It was a good night. I, I had a good time. Uh, Hoagie says, Lafroig 12 casks. Selected and bottled for the High Grove shop run by Prince Charles. Oh my goodness. That's what you're talking about. High Grove. You're too loud for England? <laughs> you're right, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, my voice is quite soft right now because I gotta I'm I'm still getting over this this flu bug or something that I got before I came on the trip. Fortunately, I 
I got a little bit of a sinus thing going, but I was popping Sudafed pills for the whole week and a half. And I ran out a couple of days ago and I was going to buy some more, but I thought, ah, let's, it's pretty much dried out. But I can still nose and taste. And Sudafed made that possible. So I don't know. Is Sudafed going to start sending me money now to say things like that? I don't know. I've never seen a Sudafed ad on one of my uh, vids. Have you? Anyway, yeah, too loud for England, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got 15 people watching. We've been gone, going on for half an hour. I'm getting hungry. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go for dinner, I think, in, in a short time. Maybe have another dram or two before dinner. Meet up with Vin. I got a bottle for him that I think he's going to enjoy. And uh, Mark Slinger. There's Mark Slinger again from last night. Uh, and he says, uh, looks like you had a good time last night in Manchester. Yeah, we did. And just before that, whiskey friend Alan says, apparently you are supposed to go to the whiskey bar for the music and not the whiskey. That's right. We we're supposed to drink that beer. What was that beer called? Uh, Hogshead or something? No. Um, rain Shed or I don't know, some kind of beer that they had on tap. Anyway, it, it, Shed was in the name of it. Oh, somebody's knocking on the wall. I think we're too loud. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, this has been a treat. This has been a blast. Um, uh, sheep shed. Thank you. <laughs> the man has a better, a better, uh, much better memory than I do. Sheep shed. Was that what it was? Okay. Sheep shed. Uh, Hoagie's got to go. Enjoy the rest of your trip, Quig. Yeah, Hoagie. We'll be in touch and so on. And I think this is a really good place to cut it because this is going to be a short little video. And I want people to enjoy watching it before it gets boring. So um, let's find out where the stopping thing is. Cheers, Quig, says Bourbon Journey. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cheers, Scott. Bourbon Journey, says Scott. Yeah, Scott. He came in. He's And, uh, yeah, he says, cheers, Quig. And Ho Hoagie's got to go. So the this, this show's at an end here. Okay. Bye, Quigger, says Apu. Oh my good. Uh, are you on later? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens with Vin. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to stop this little piggy here. Uh, I'm usually good at this. Uh, share mute microphone. No, that's not what we wanted. How do you, come on. There must be a, yeah, it says rotate device. I know I did that. Let's try this.